Hi guys, welcome back. On today's video, I wanna talk about a little bit of the Redonda Vought case. Um, and I wanna talk about it from a nurse's perspective. The Redonda Vought case is about a case in Tennessee where the nurse was criminally charged for a medication error. So if you wanna keep hearing what my thoughts and how I feel like this is gonna affect our profession, uh, stay tuned and keep on watching. Okay, so for those who don't know, a little bit of the backstory that I have been pulling from videos I have been seeing on the internet, and it actually made headline news. So, um, Redonda Vaught was a 35 year is is a 35 year old nurse who, two years ago, um, in 2018 actually, yeah, 2018, sorry, more than two years ago, in December, made a terrible, terrible medication error that ended up costing the patient's life. Um, a year after the fact, the state of Tennessee decided to criminally charge her for a reckless homicide. And pretty much this past weekend on Friday, you know, the jurors deliberated and pretty much found her guilty. And so now she's looking at serving jail time. So this is wrong on so many ways. It just, so a little bit about the backstory. So from, I actually watched some of the jury, uh, the trial process. So pretty much Redonda Vaught was the resource nurse. She, her job title, your job title as a resource nurse is to just kind of jump in, help out and leave. That That's your title, you, had, you don't have an assignment, you just jump in and you help out where is needed. So apparently, Somebody called her and told her, hey, I have a patient in radiology. I believe the patient was going for a PET scan who was a little anxious. The doctor ordered two of Versed, which is two milligrams of Versed, which is a medication we give sometimes to sedate patients. So from what happened was that their computer systems, they had just switched their computer systems to Epic system. And as many of you guys know, if you work with computers, their epic system where the orders come in and the pixis which is actual an actual machine that ha pops out drawers where your medications come from weren't apparently talking to each other so whatever medication was ordered it would never come across the pixis so redonda to try to be an efficient nurse went overrode the medication which pretty much means that she told the computer this is what i want kind of put in her medications and said this is what I want to take out so Versed um, we call it Versed but it also has another name which is midazolam so apparently their Pixis system was only you're supposed to go by the generic name so their Pixis only went by generic names so for example in in any medication there's a generic name and there's a brand name so for example, say Tylenol. Tylenol is a brand name. That's what everybody knows it at. That is the brand. But the generic name for Tylenol is acetaminophen. So you can pretty much buy acetaminophen everywhere, but some people will only want Tylenol because they think the brand is better. Besides the point. Anywho, so they're two different names, same medication. So apparently their Pixis only went by the generic name. So Redonda should have put in Midazolam which is a M, starts M-I. Well, she went, she put in by the brand name, which is Versed, so she put in V-E. So when she put in V-E, the drawer, the first drawer that popped up that she clicked okay was Vecuronium. So if you guys don't know what Vec is, it's pretty much the medication we usually give in the ER to paralyze somebody's muscles. It means they're still awake, still alert, but they literally, all of their muscles get paralyzed and you stop breathing because your muscles, you know, your breathing, your lungs, your diaphragm, it's all the muscle. So unfortunate situation happened. She gave the patient the, vers the ver not the Versed, she gave the patient the Vecuronium. She administered it, gave it, left radiology to go move on with her other assignment to go help another nurse out. Well, because she did this, the patient ended up paralyzing her muscles by the time they finished the test, they realized that she wasn't breathing and her heart had stopped beating. And 
they had to do CPR on her, they revived her, but ultimately because she had gone on without any oxygen for so long, her family decided to take her off life support and the patient died. So right away, Redonda admitted to her fault. She said, yes, I pulled the wrong medication. I shouldn't have done that. I gave the wrong medication. I left. She admitted to her fault. She told the hospital and you know, they did a big old internal review. They ended up firing her and she moved on, you know, as best she could. Started with nurse, working nursing somewhere else. Well, apparently what nobody really knew is that the hospital did not report this to the state. You know, anytime we have one of these, what we call sentinel events is when something terrible happens to a patient that should be alerted to the state so we can try to figure out what went wrong. The hospital covered it up and never told the state. Instead, they told the family quietly, paid the family off, which was probably millions of dollars, and pretty much told them, you cannot ever talk about this ever again. Well, somebody ended up leaking this information to the state. The state investigated and sure enough, found out that the hospital covered this up. So then they investigated Redonda. I have no idea what happened from there to get to this point, but Redonda was criminally charged for a uh, reckless homicide. That is just so terrible. I can't even fathom having been put in that situation. I can tell you from my own experience, I have committed med errors. The only difference I think for me has been that nobody died from them. They were small med errors, like I underdosed a patient with a little bit too less of a medication, but nonetheless, it was still a med error. And we are human. And the only time, the only reason that that happened to me was because we were one, short staffed. It was a critical situation with the patient. I was the only nurse there. It was me, the doctor, and I think one tech, we ran a code. Um, the patient ended up having an MI and I gave, underdosed him on a heparin. So that still could have cost the patient his life. Thankfully for me, it didn't. But had I had the right resources, had I had extra time to be careful about what I was doing, I would have not committed that med error. And so I feel like in this situation, any it can happen to anyone. Anyone can commit a med error. And for her, it was a terrible med error. I'm not saying she was right or 100% innocent because as a nurse, you're still supposed to double check your medication. You're still supposed to make sure that you pulled out what pulled out. I can't vouch for what happened between there and there, but she's still human. She made a terrible mistake. I could see if she willingly knew what she pulled out and did it intentionally to hurt the patient, but she admitted to it right away after she did it. She said, oh my God, I messed up, I messed up. Yes, I did this, oh my God. I'm sure she has probably been through it mentally, emotionally, I can't even imagine. And then for two years later for the state to come and criminally charge you, and then you're found guilty a year after that, I, this is so wrong, so wrong on so many ways in our profession because you know what's gonna happen? Who is going to want to admit to a medication error? Who's going to want to say, oh yeah, by the way, I messed up. Because what, what's going to happen the moment you admit it is that somebody can pursue you criminally. Instead of it being a learning, you know, I could see if she did this all the time. But this was one time where she did a medication error and she has now, has cost her her livelihood, has cost her her nursing license, it has cost her literally her life she's probably gonna face jail time. I am just so bothered by this because I just feel like if she's gonna be held liable, then the hospital administrator should be held liable too because there was multiple things. Oh, and then I forgot to mention, they had no medication scanners in radiology department. So she couldn't even, that would have been another thing that would have stopped her from giving it. If she would have scanned the medication and on the system it would have said, wait, stop, you're giving the wrong medication. So the hospital has to take some accountability, some liability. Your system, your computer system wasn't working. 
your you have no scanners in the radiology department like i just it just it just bothers me and this is why even it's even more so more important for us to fight for safe staffing for us to be vocal about unsafe assignments you know sometimes as a nurse you just want to keep doing and doing and doing because you know it's like i have to i have to fix this patient and i have to get them but sometimes you need to take a step back and just do one thing at a time so that you don't have these mistakes happen especially costly mistakes you know ever since i did my little med error you know incident i have been so careful like i'm just like okay now one thing at a time andrea you're not gonna do it all you, you you cannot possibly do 10 jobs and if i need to i will grab somebody to help me it just it's just so sad it's so sad and i can't even imagine what she's going through and i just really hope that this whole case makes nurses stand up for themselves more makes them be vocal more about unsafe assignments because it's gonna be it is hard to stand up for yourself i'm not gonna lie it's hard when you have a nursing supervisor or a charge nurse telling you come on or somebody just you know the doctor's yelling at you like hurry up and do this you know and it happens it will happen but it's gonna be so much more harder to stand before a judge and possibly lose your entire livelihood because you committed a matter med error I don't know what's gonna happen from here on out. I don't know how, how as a profession we can learn, move forward from this case or what we can do as a profession to, to protect our nurses. But it's just, it's really scary. It's like, I'm gonna be that much more vocal now because no, I am not trying to go to jail for something that happened. And you know, we're all human. We all make mistakes in our job, in our workplace. And unfortunately for us, our mistakes can cost the patient a life, you know? So I don't know, those are just my two cents. It's terrible and I really hope that you guys out there, you young nurses, you new nurses are very vocal about protecting yourself, your license, your livelihood. Take care of your patients one thing at a time. There's no rush. Most of us work in an acute hospital settings it's a 24 hour facility. Things are gonna get done when they get done, you know? And we're not perfect, we're human, we make mistakes. But take care of yourself, take care of your patient to the best, best of your ability and be vocal. That's my only piece that I can say is speak up. If you are not feel comfortable, if you don't feel safe, speak up. Cause it does not matter how experienced you are. It does not matter how long you've been a nurse. You could still make mistakes and things can still happen to patients. So with that said, I'm going to end the video here because as you can tell, I'm very bothered by this and I'm very upset by this and you all should be too. All right, guys, I'll catch you later.